Hey, welcome to Ike's Vintage Tech. Today I've got a quarter of a century old Logitech cordless desktop iTouch. This is pretty much in the box. The seal's been broken, it's been opened, but it has not been unpackaged at all, ever. So I'm gonna be taking this apart, unboxing it, and showing you guys uh, how, how well it works. Was it really top of its game back then, or should I stick to the wired mouse and keyboard I'm used to? Stay tuned. If you like seeing tech like this that I happen to find in attics and crawl spaces, please consider subscribing. Thanks. All right, here, let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. Like I said in the intro, this thing was pretty much just found in a pile of other unused stuff. I am gonna keep the box, don't worry. I'm not gonna throw it out. I just don't have room back here. So this was no joke, I wasn't kidding. This has been sitting in a box for a quarter of a century untouched. Here's all the paperwork, registration card, manuals. The mouse is still in its package, not a fingerprint or wear mark to be seen. I really hope it doesn't have batteries. So if this was used and it's got batteries in it. Okay, oh, AAA batteries, I gotta go get those. I thought it was all double A. So yeah, no batteries in here at all, thank goodness. So I'm gonna go get some AAA batteries for that in a second. This is the wireless, yeah, it's a little bit big for a dongle. The wireless base station, I'll say. And because of its age, it has the old style keyboard connector. So if you've got a, a 386 you wanna throw this thing on, it'll work. This is worth every penny. And it's got the serial mouse adapter. This right here. These two little things I'm going to hold on to because I will be using them. Ah, oh, yeah, this has never been used. There's not a fingerprint on this thing, not dust or anything on the bottom of the pads. This, this is looking good. I am optimistic that this was actually kept in a box for all these years. Palm rest. Uh, batteries are loose, so those have been around. Wow, okay. If any of you are old enough to remember this, this uses the little thing here you squeeze and you get to see how much juice is left in the battery. Uh, surprisingly, none. No juice left in a 25-year-old AAA. Go figure. So yeah, the, the batteries are all over the place. I don't know how much this thing has been moved around over the years or if it's sat exactly where, oh wow. I don't know if you can see this, but the AA battery still has a charge. That, I'm not gonna put them in here because it'll eventually leak, but that is pretty cool. Somehow the batteries made it into the bag with some dust. <laughs> I don't know what's in there. Uh, yeah, here is the keyboard. Once again, not a speck of dust. Now, now there's not a speck of dust. Yeah, not a hint of any use whatsoever. No batteries on the inside. Once again, thank goodness. This thing looks absolutely clean. This was a true lucky find. Oh, that is what came, okay, it looked like cracker dust came out of this thing. Okay, this is leaking. I'm gonna go wash my hands in a second. But yeah, this battery did burst. Uh, that is what I saw in there when little bits of crumbs fell out. It literally looks like uh, somebody's eating crackers over the keyboard and put it away. It was battery acid leaking, yay. I'll be right back, I'm gonna go wash my hands. Okay, this, ooh, this is nasty. I shouldn't be touching this at all. The second AAA did burst, and when it hit my desk, it blew up. I am gonna go wash my hands immediately. I'll be right back. <laughs> all right, I am back. I've got some brand new AAA batteries that we're gonna put in there. All right, I'm gonna take what I need out of here and put the rest away for now. Luckily, and I mean it, luckily, 
these batteries were not inside the keyboard. I cannot stress this enough. Batteries will leak. Double A's, triple A's, coin cells even eventually leak. Everything will leak if you give it enough time. And 25 years, that's what did it for these. Now, what's funny is the other two batteries, oh, okay, I lie. One of the batteries out of four is still good. The other AAA battery is also a little leaky on the end here. Let's put that in its little baggie. But this battery here somehow, you know, 25% success rate <laughs> somehow stayed alive. I am not gonna use it. This battery was good until March 2006, so let's just say they probably gave it a five or six year life. Uh, I can find out the actual age by looking at the bottom of the keyboard uh, palm rest here. I am looking at the year 2000 and the fifth month. So yeah, this thing is from May 2000. That's how old this thing is. It's currently 2024. Uh, we're in November 2024, so yeah, this thing is almost 25 years old. Uh, this spring, it'll be it'll hit 25 years old. So those batteries are roughly almost 25 years old. <laughs> I can't stress this enough. You need to get batteries out of your equipment. If you have a large vintage collection and you're going to be storing stuff for a while, you can't use. 27 computers all at the same time unless you have a giant house with a giant office and I don't have that so whenever I'm not using anything I do take the batteries out if there isn't a removable battery for some reason if it's in there uh, permanently like a soldered on uh, PRAM battery in the old Max I cut those out and I do eventually replace them with removable batteries I don't like leaving batteries in for the long term because this is what can happen so I'm gonna go ahead and just carefully set those down there. I don't need those leaking. I'm gonna take my vintage, vintage computer adapters and uh, set them over there. I don't have a system yet that is a 386. The oldest computer I got PC-wise is a 486. I do have a 386 in the mail, so look forward to that video. I can't wait to get that, and it does have a leaky battery, so Stay tuned for that video. I'm gonna to have to repair that mess. But let's go ahead and get this together. This takes two double A's for the keyboard and two triple A's for the mouse. Now, I didn't open this thing up. For all I know, there could be uh, you know, leaky capacitors, whatnot. Hopefully not. It's possible though. So let's get the palm rest on here. I typically don't use them, but let's just do the full the full feel out for it. Now this is the keyboard. It's got a little, or not the keyboard, it's this, this is the mouse. This has a little connect button on the bottom that you pair it up like so. Let's go ahead and get this together. It has a ball too, it's not optical. All right, so the batteries go on top once you remove that. Just like so. Nice clear visual, so if you have any trouble seeing up close, you, you can read that at least, so you don't get the batteries in backwards. And there is a driver CD with installation software we're gonna go ahead and put in. That is right here with the manuals. Uh, mostly that's gonna support your uh, touch up here, your sleep function. There are buttons on here for email, search, a little running man, maybe run a program, we'll see, or your home button, whatever that does. Uh, I'm sure the manual will tell me, but the software is probably kind of obvious. Let's go ahead and unplug my trusty wired connection here, and we'll plug this in. All right, so everything has its batteries. I've got the giant dongle plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Now, out of curiosity, let's see if I can actually use the keyboard right away or if I have to pair it first. Uh, I should be able to see that once the BIOS comes up. Here we go. Okay, right there. I was able to hit tab and it shows the details of the boot screen so I know the keyboard's connected. Uh, I'm going to assume the mouse is probably connected but there is the connect button if that doesn't work and we'll see that in a second. Right there, keyboard and mouse detected, legacy USB enabled, not using USB currently but it's there. Now there are other models where I've looked into it and they have like the same 
type of dongle where it's either PS2 or USB. This one is strictly PS2. I'm not sure of the range of it. It has a fairly long cable so that you could run this thing up and under your desk. Now, first impression typing my password there, it felt like this keyboard has a little softer touch where this is a little little more clicky. It's still a membrane. It's the same exact keyboard. Let's not uh, fool ourselves there as far as what the inside looks like. It's a membrane, but these keys are a little bit more clicky, it feels. Uh, there is no caps lock indicator, so I don't see a light that would tell me that the caps lock is on until I start typing, I guess. All right, so none of the typical typing tests are going to work. So we go up here and look for WordPad. All right, I am an okay typer at best. So I, I have to keep looking down. It is just a little different feeling than I'm used to, but it types. Everything works right out of the bat. I didn't need the uh, software CD, but let's see if the volume control works. Okay, none of that works. I don't see anything like that. It's not opening any applications. The home button doesn't do anything. Oh, okay. So, what button did I hit for that? Oh, it's opening up everything. So, okay, the email button opens up Outlook Express. Obviously, I'm not using that. Yes, I want to exit. So, those keys do work. The search key just opens up Windows Search, which back in the day when it actually kind of worked and didn't just bring you websites. And if you open the little running man, it opens up your browser of choice, I believe, or it did. Okay, the running man doesn't do anything. It was the home button I hit. So the home button opens up your default browser. Uh, that was useful back in the day because your taskbar was kind of small. Uh, you could resize it, do stuff like that, but overall it didn't have the giant animated buttons that we have today. It was much smaller. Mice weren't as accurate you could say whatever excuse you needed logitech and other companies thought you needed buttons for these common everyday items and there is a sleep button uh, i'm kind of afraid of to see if it works let's find out yes it does i haven't tried putting this computer to sleep yet let's see if it wakes up there you go okay test successfully so that does work. Obviously, Frog Find, everyone's favorite vintage uh, search engine. Sean does a great job keeping that up. So yeah, this keyboard is pretty sick considering its age, the potential it had for leaky batteries. I'm going to weigh this mouse and we're going to we're going to see how much that weighs. All right, I got my scale here. It is on pounds and ounces, so we're going to go ahead and put that on grams. All right, so I tried weighing just the mouse by itself and this scale, this postage scale is not dialed down that far. I would have to use like a uh, powder scale for measuring uh, gunpowder. That might give a more accurate uh, weight on this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put the keyboard on here. So this is weighing in at 1100 grams. If I put the mouse on top of that, we get 1200 grams. So Seeing that this is only jumping in increments of 50 grams, it could be anywhere from 51 grams to 149, you know, whatever the window of error on that is. But that's still a pretty hefty mouse considering the same mice of the time. Like this is an optical mouse and it feels a lot lighter. Let's see if I can get this mouse on the scale here to see what it says. Yeah, that doesn't even, okay, 50 grams. So this mouse is about 50 grams where the similar mouse of its era is about 100 grams. So this is about twice the weight of the mouse I was using prior. And it, it is a little hefty boy. So <laughs> let's get my scale out of here. All right, now that I got that done typing test, you know, it works. Let's go ahead and get the CD installed. 
Ooh, this this is gonna hurt. I gotta I gotta rip open the plastic. See, I'm doing this for you. I'm ripping the plastic. It hurts. Why would I do this? I can just download it. I'm lazy. You hear the cars driving by? Let's just see what bloatware they tried to give you back in 1999. Okay, it's going right to the setup. It, it doesn't even bother coming up with a pop-up saying install Adobe, install whatever. So yeah, right here, copyright 1999. So the box itself has a 1999 copyright as well. So this was obviously designed in 99, designed and sold. The keyboard palm rest obviously was made in May of 2000. So we do know the precise age of that. Okay, now it's trying to get me to install. Okay, this is kind of hard to see because my resolution is a little sh little wonky on the monitor here. AudioSoft Virtuosa for iTouch. All right, so that's basically an MP3 downloader organizer, kind of like a Logitech iTunes. Not going to do it. Don't need it. No thank you. And yes, let's restart the computer. All right, system is now booting up. We're getting all the normal pop-ups. So this is telling me that it has installed a mouse, cordless mouse on the PS2 port. Ba okay, that's good. It actually tells me the battery level. I was not expecting that. That's good information. Now I have a caps lock and num lock indicator. So that's where those would be because the keyboard doesn't have LEDs. All right, next thing I wanna do is test out the scroll wheel. So we're gonna open up a website that has quite a bit of scrolling on it. That would be 68k.news, another one of Sean's sites. And yeah, lots of news. Uh, good news, bad news, depending on who you are, but it's all news. The scrolling works. Just great. Up, down. Let's see if I can center scroll. There we go. Uh, speed is a little slow. I can't, okay, if I go lower, no, it's about the same speed. So there's that. It, it needs some work. It does work though. So you can scroll just fine. That's pretty nice. Let's get out of there. And we will go to Unreal Tournament. Let's just see how it feels in game. Should I be using this on my computers uh, if I'm gonna be playing games or should I just save this for the older systems that need a uh, serial connection for the mouse and the old, uh, the old keyboard connector, I forget what that's called. I'm a bad vintage tech guy if I don't know that, I guess. So I'm gonna see how this thing runs in games. I am not expecting it to be great just because of its age, latency, all that. So what I think I'm gonna be using this for is whenever I have a system that just has an older uh, keyboard and mouse that I'll need, like the 386s, I have a serial and I have the original uh, older style keyboard port. And uh, now I don't need to use this on this Specifically, I can use it on this keyboard just fine. It's just nice to have these little adapters because I don't know how much these cost on eBay right now, but I bet they're stupid expensive because anything vintage, especially in that condition, is just stupid. Let's go ahead and get into a game real quick here. I'm not good at this game. I've said that before. I'm way out of practice. Okay, I got a shield belt. Oh, there's a person. Alrighty, person's down. Let's find out where that rocket launcher is. Ooh, nice. And she had the... She had the rocket launcher. Where'd she go? A little bit of camping. 
Oh, whoa! <laughs> hey, look at you. Oh, that's great. <laughs> this is more fun when you got a rocket launcher. Oh, okay, I did it. I did it. <laughs> now, you don't know me personally, obviously. Yeah, some of you do. But whenever my son does something good, he'll say, I did it. <laughs> it's just funny. Ooh, got a little beat up there. My health is definitely low. There we go. Getting the things I need. Oh boy. That hurt. Ooh, she got me. She got me good. Ooh, got me again. I got lazy. Clearly. All right, clearly, <laughs> clearly it works okay for gaming. Uh, I am only going up against a computer, not actual people. I still think I would be doing better on this keyboard and mouse. I'm not, I'm not great at these games. I love to play them. That's been decades out of practice. So that's my excuse that I'm going to go with. But overall, this is a really good find. There's no yellowing, uh, no dirty DNA inside the keys. This is a good, good find. All right. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think of keyboards like this. Were they worth it for the time? Uh, definitely when you had all these wires like that, I'd say it was worth the time back then. Let me know what else you guys want to see. I've got quite the collection and I'm going to see what else I can get this working on. Stay tuned, like, subscribe, and let me know. Thanks.